Um, everybody take a nice big breath. Just sigh it out. Here we are. We're in this time of great transition. For some, it's a time of great difficulties. For others, great boredoms. Um, all of us are striving. All of us are striving to kind of find the, the direction of right action. And I have spent a lot of these last few weeks diving into the sacred texts of yoga, the Bhagavad Gita and the Upanishads, um, and also doing some online courses um, that take me a little deeper into, into practice, into theory, and into history. Um, it's just, it's, it's so good if we're in these spaces of, of not knowing that we can turn to something that is helpful and has guided people through millennia to, to take, um, to take right action and to know what that feels like. So, um, one of the first things we need to do according to the, the sacred text is embrace this pause, um, feel, find ways to feel safe in the pause and to nourish yourself in this pause. So I did a recording about groundedness and that is on YouTube um, and it has to do with the earth element. I'll be hopefully soon completing a video on the water element and going through all the five elements and those will be uh, YouTube videos becoming an online course. But for these live videos, I'll shift it up a little bit and today I thought that one of the one of the most important ways we can nourish ourselves is to breathe well. Um, and of course, um, this, this uh, pandemic has to do with, um, with lung capacity, um, with, the, with the ability for our bodies to, to move those tissues so they don't become overly adherent. Um, from what I understand, you know, it's, it feels like a gripping when it takes hold. It's very, um, it solidifies the, the space of your, of your lungs. So we want to make sure that we start out with the capacity to, to move this space as well as possible. So let me just introduce a little bit about um, breathing. Tim's behind me, that yellow um, addition to his skeleton is, represents the diaphragm, which is in the, in the center of the body, adhered to the lower ribs and spine. Um, it's a dome-like structure. All breath, unless you're on a respirator, all breath comes via action of the diaphragm. The diaphragm can move down into the abdomen, which is sometimes referred to as a belly breath, or I think of it as abdominal breathing. Um, it will choose that route at rest, um, because ideally when we're resting, sitting like this or laying back, the belly's relaxed. And so it takes the least amount of energy to, to descend and to move into the soft tissues of the abdomen. The other thing the diaphragm can do is it can expand outward. So if we're active, running or walking or doing some type of work where the spine needs more support, the belly will become firmer. The diaphragm can't descend very easily, so when it tries, it gets blocked and then it extends outward into the ribs, into these lower costal regions of the, of the rib space. Um, and that's called the thoracic breath. It usually expands all the way around the ribs down in that space um, because of the way the ribs are, are created. The articulations of the ribs are along the spine. So if we have a lot of stiffness, particularly in our upper back, we, we won't have very good extension out into the side bodies for those, for those ribs to, to move. They move like louvers, right? So the articulations in the back, the diaphragm signals movement there, and then the movement along the spine begins to open the ribs like, like louvered uh, window blinds, and those ribs expand out as they, as they spiral, and the thoracic area expands. Inhale occurs. 
The third place for the breath to um, move is as that diaphragm signals up the back of the spine and the ribs begin to articulate, um, it can continue up into the upper back. And then we have what we call a, a sternoclavicular breath um, or a scaling breath. That's just referring to the, some of the anatomy in this area. And it's sometimes also referred to as an inverse breath where the shoulders reach up and expand in this upper area of the, of the lungs. Not, no breathing is wrong. All three of those paths of breath are, are functional and useful. And if we need to breathe deeply, we'll, we'll employ all three. And you'll see that in someone who's just run like a marathon or not a marathon, a, a sprint where they've had to really uh, get a lot of oxygen in. They will usually lean over onto their knees so that their spine is soft, their belly can relax, and you'll see their whole body heaving to breathe. Right, so they'll use all of that capacity. Um, today, what we really want to emphasize is is kind of breathing into this into this space down here. Generally, the space up here um, is kind of where we do a lot of our breathing, or into the belly space. So we kind of miss this broad capacity in the middle of our bodies, and unfortunately, that's where a lot of disease is is found because of this residual incapacity to not only inhale into there but to exhale and to to bring that out so um, we want to be able to do that so that's what we're going to be working in our emphasis we're going to start with a grounding breath um, has to do with kind of um, stimulating the base of our bodies um, if you understand a little bit about some of the um, the yantras or the symbolism around yoga, the, the root yoga is represented by a square, right? So we're gonna do something that's called square breathing or just breathing into fours, four, four spaces of, of four parts of the breath. So I invite you to, we're gonna start with just that and then we'll start some stretching and we're gonna employ that four square breathing throughout our practice today. So, um, Find a comfortable seat. You can start this laying down if you prefer. If you want to just lay down and follow my instruction that way, that's absolutely fine. Um, but we're, we're going to just slowly work into a four count breath. It'll be four on the inhale, hold for four, four on the exhale, hold for four. So that's the square. Um, and I do want to always, whenever I teach any kind of breathing practice, I want to really um, let you know that if, if it's hard for you, if you feel your breath becoming ragged, like you can't do that four count hold, or that you just feel like, I just need to take a breath, I can't do this four count practice, then just let it go. Um, the reason why we're slowing the breath is it's supposed to help to quiet the nervous system. But if your nervous system is reactive against that, then it's obviously not working for you. So make sure you make this practice your own, all right? So finding a comfortable seat, maybe you're sitting on the floor, maybe you're laying on the floor, you can be sitting on a chair, anything that works for you. And allow yourself to kind of settle in. I want you to be in a relaxed position so the abdomen can be soft. I don't want you to try to sit up overly straight and, and constrict your upper back, right? So shoulders back and down is not awesome. Right now we just want shoulders relaxed. So relax your belly and maybe roll your shoulders out and let them just kind of fall and relax, stacking your ribs over your hips. And then the best way to kind of stack your head over your shoulders and ribs is to maybe just create a little bit of a chin tuck that opens the throat well as, as opens the throat nicely as well. If you're able to just breathe through your nostrils, then allow that. But if you feel like for any reason you need to open your mouth, then please allow that. So first of all, just come into awareness of the breath. Into this pause. Into this stillness. And yet into this sense of gentle movement. The breath like ripples on the surface of water. Gentle, present, experienced, but not turbulent.
as you begin to witness your breath, then just begin to become aware of the length and depth of your inhale. What moves as you inhale. The length and depth of your exhale and what moves to assist you in that release. Nothing to change right now. We're just observing and becoming more fully aware of this flow. Now, as you become aware of the flow, just experiment with this feeling of pause at the end of your inhale. When you're full, just a little pause. You don't have to worry about the four count yet. Just experience the fullness. And then at the end of your exhale, again, this little pause to experience the emptiness. Notice what, again, expands as you inhale and hold space in your body. Notice what contracts as you exhale and centers you, moves into a place of, of strength in your body. As you become familiar with your breathing cycles and the sensations of the breath, now begin to play with creating that four square breath. Notice if it's comfortable for you to inhale on the count of four. How long is the pause comfortable for you? Does the exhale easily come out of you to a count of four? And what does it feel like to maybe extend that pause at the end of the exhale? And then just simply create your count, trying to make the four parts of your breath, both the active and the paused parts, balanced. We're going to take about two to three more cycles here of just observing and balancing your breath cycles. Now, as we begin to take just some, some warming movements, then you can absolutely allow your breath to just kind of create its own flow. But remembering this four square breath, because as we get into some deeper stretches, we will employ it again, all right? So feel free to, to shift your position. I think what I'm gonna do is, is maybe turn sideways here. Um, so you can kind of see me from the side. So I'm going to shift into seated staff pose. Again, you can um, change your position however you'd like to. Um, and if it feels better for you to, to use blankets or any kind of props, um, that's awesome. Use them. Um, so sitting, um, again, in a, in a relaxed upright position. Um, if you're sitting in a chair, just kind of move away from the back of the chair a little bit. We're gonna bring our arms in front of us and I want you to start with just some nice movements through your wrists and fingers, just stretching out through that space. You know, when we have constriction in our shoulders, um, many times it comes from our hands, our hands that are always gripping or typing, holding things. Um, you know, our hands work hard for us. And so remembering that the connection from our hands uh, to our brain and heart comes through our shoulder girdle, right? All of the muscles that support our arms, let's change directions. All of the nerves that serve our fingers to be able to have all of these amazing articulations, all of those come through that 
sternoclavicular and scalene area, which is maybe where we're doing a lot of our breathing. So maybe there's a lot of tension there. And we might experience it more in our hands or maybe we experience it more in our upper backs. All right, so we've taken some nice movements here. We're gonna interlace our fingers and, and push them tightly together so the webbing is tight together. Bring them right to your heart and it's as if you're trying to pull them apart. Don't let them pull apart, just stretch your fingers. Take your thumbs and stretch your thumbs apart. So you can start to feel the, the connections. You might feel the strength coming from this, this bind of your hands through your arms, even into your upper back and neck and shoulders, right? So create a nice bind here, create some pulls. Let's take some of those four square breaths here, just a couple of rounds of breath with the strength, see what that feels like. So inhaling to a count of four, pausing, exhaling to a count of four, pausing. And just notice how that feels as you take one more round like that with this strong bind. Do you feel anything differently happening in your breath capacity or in your sense of connection and awareness to what opens and then what uh, contracts and strengthens? And then we're gonna take our palms and we're gonna turn them out and we're gonna push our arms away. Keep the bind strong so you're still acting as if you're pulling those arms apart. Straighten the elbows push the hands away, start to push into the backs of your knuckles so you can create a bit more stretch to your hands. So you're still pulling your fingers apart, but now you're stretching a little bit deep, deeper. Keep your thumbs pointing down and stretching apart. And now let your shoulders kind of round so you can, you're feeling this pull through your hands and you're feeling it through your upper back. And again, a couple of, couple of breath cycles here, that four cycle breath. And then we're gonna to start to bring our arms towards overhead. Now take your time here, keep these binds strong and watch the tendency of, of arching your back rather than moving your arms. See if you can keep your back aligned. So keep your ribs right over your hips. And the tendency is kind of to soften the elbows as you come up, as you meet the challenge. Just keep your elbows as straight and strong as you can and notice when the challenge begins. Rather than softening your elbows and just trying to see how far you can get your arms back or arching your back and kind of feeling that sense, try to keep your elbows straight and come to the end of your movement. And then take, take a couple of those four square breaths and just notice what it feels like with the arms overhead. The bind's strong. All right, and then we'll soften those arms. Usually your shoulders are kind of like, whoa, what just happened to me? So just take some nice shoulder rolls. Mm. All right, we are going to, we're going to take our bind around behind us. So here's one place where you can absolutely use your dowel if you have the incapacity, if you don't have the capacity to interlace your fingers behind you, then maybe grab your dowel and just bring your dowel behind you and hold on to it wherever you can with your arms. And we're just, again, we're creating a bind with maybe your fingers are interlaced or maybe you're holding on to a, a if you don't have a dowel, use a, a, a strap or, or whatever. If you, again, if you can, you can interlace your fingers behind you. We're pulling those fingers as if we're drawing them apart. If you have a lot of flexibility in your arms and you can turn the palms down and create the bind that way, that's awesome. That kind of stretches a little bit more into the front of the chest. But if that doesn't feel right, again, you can even if you grab your dowel, you can act as if you're turning those palms on the dowel. They won't move, but you will get that rotation in your upper arm. Right? And then if you're able to, to stretch behind, Again, once we feel the stretch through the front of our shoulders, we're gonna be taking a four square breath or two. Take a couple of cycles here. And again, just observing what does it feel like? What moves to open me? 
What does it feel like to hold that fullness? What contracts and moves towards my center to assist in my exhale? And what does it feel like to hold that strength at your center? Nice breath there. Awesome. All right. We'll release it. I can see, I see some comments going through. Thank you guys. It is weird teaching without people, <laughs> all right? But I know you're out there and I'm so glad you are. All right, we're gonna shift positions and we're gonna work through some, just some mobilization. Now we warmed up and kind of stretched through our shoulders, through all the different areas uh, around our shoulders. Um, so now we're gonna kind of move into our spine. I'm gonna take a cat-cow series on, on all fours. So feel free to, to shift, roll over your knees, or just bring your knees around behind you. Again, if you need any kind of padding under your knees or support under your hands, feel free to, to grab that. There'll be plenty of time, so you have to leave and come back, that's fine. Um, I do wanna let you know that there are, there are some ways to take some of the um, effort out of your wrists, and that's one of the easiest ways, just come down onto your elbows if your wrists aren't able to hold you in this position. The other thing is to use your whole hand. Spread your fingers and rather than just dumping all of the weight of your shoulder into your wrist, push into your hands and it's almost like you're trying to maybe even pull kind of this tiny bit of the palm away from your mat and that should help take some of the work out of your wrist. You can also have your hands a little bit in front of you. That's absolutely fine, right? So find a way to support your upper body weight through your arms. And then of course, knees under your hips. And again, you can take a little bit easier knee position if you turn your toes under and you kind of push into your toes. It's almost like you could lift your knees off or if it's um, able for you to, to stretch your toes and to push into the tops of the feet and shins, that can give you a little bit more ease in your knees as well. So let's just take a couple of cat and cows here and just observing the movement of your spine, right? So whatever feels good, you know, if you want to wiggle side to side or just, you know, do, you know, anything, anything that feels good for you right now, just kind of take these moments and just kind of, mm, 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 mm. here I am. What do I need? What feels good to me? All right. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take that four square breathing into, into cat and cow movements. So we're going to add movement with our breath. And we do want to access this middle section of our, of our bodies, this kind of the lower thorax area, the, what I, I usually call it the wide waistband. You know, it's like a, a hand span around your waistband. Um, and a lot of times, like, that's the only thing we move, or we don't move that area even very well in cat and cow. We kind of just, you know, um, you can see my spine's not really moving that much. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take it slow. We're gonna take it through the pelvis first. That's the count to one. And then you can probably already feel there's a little stretch happening in this area. Stretch that area as best you can too. Move into your shoulders, rounding them. There's our three count. And then four count is tucking the chin and stretching through the neck. And then we're gonna hold that position for our four count. So that's the inhale. I want you to get those ribs to be able to articulate on the inhale, right? So nice slow four count into your cat pose. Hold that inhale for four. And then we're going to un, um, unround the spine, extend the spine for four counts starting at the lower back, try to keep your shoulders rounded and your head down. You might feel again that stretch a little bit in this area because your, your lower back is dropping down, pulling through that area. And then continue two, three, four. Hold your exhale here and hold your exhale nice and firm. The, the belly should be contracted in this position. And I know this is where we usually inhale. I'm mindfully shifting you, all right? So exhaling, holding. So let's create that into a flow now. So inhale to the count of four as you slowly round your spine. 
pull to the count of four. And then exhale to the count of four, slowly bringing your spine into full posterior extension for cow pose. Hold the exhale for a count of four. Try that a couple more times on your own. And again, if that rhythm doesn't work for you, shift it, right? Shift it to what feels right. And notice the challenge maybe you're having um, through, your, through your mental concentration that you really, you want to exhale as you go into cow, or go into cat, and you want to inhale as you go into cow. Work with your mental concentration, your mental focus here. Inhale as you round your spine. Hold that fullness. Exhale as you extend your spine. Hold that sense of strength. Last time through. And then I'm going to give you the option as you finish this, this four square breath through this spinal movement. Option is to either just relax back in child's pose, give your wrists a nice stretch, or if you feel like you want to take a more active posture, you can go into a downward facing dog and uh, just kind of stretch through if your arms aren't too tired. If you want to come through any kind of sequencing, take a flow, feel free to do that as well. All right. So just take a take a rest or take some movement as what feels as feels right for you today. And then we're going to um, as you're finishing up here, this is where we'll be using our dowels a little bit. Um, so if you um, haven't gotten one, take a moment and go grab one. If you if you don't have one handy, it's, it's all right, don't worry about it. You can do this without the, the traction, but the traction is gonna be really, really helpful. Um, so let's go ahead and find a seat and maybe make the seat a little different one than you've had. So we, maybe you started cross-legged or even laying on your back. Um, find a different seat than you've had. Um, I'm gonna take a, a wide-legged position here so I'm sitting on the floor and I've just, I've just spread my legs. So we're, we're really focusing on, on the chest, shoulders, and upper back. Um, but that doesn't mean that we can't shift position through our legs and kind of really benefit our hips as well. So um, in this wide-legged position, if you have a strap and you want to put it from foot to foot, you can really work those external rotators of your hips. It's a really great way to kind of find some strength in your seat. One thing I want you to do is as you find your seat, kind of wiggle around and, and make sure you're on your sit bones and that you are like plugged into the earth. So if you need something under your hips to, to create that plug, go ahead and do that. But plug in strongly because we're gonna take some stretches here and stretching and, and side bending our upper back and, and ribs is different than leaning and shifting our whole body weight. So stay nice and stable in your seat. We're gonna take just a side bend here and I do have my dowel handy. I'm gonna grab it in a moment, but one hand's gonna come down onto the ground for support and the other arm is gonna just start with a reach up. Now remember, stay plugged in, rooted down through the side body as you reach up and stretch over. Soft neck, you guys, right? So just experiencing the breath in the sides of our bodies now. And then I want you to bring your arm a little forward. Experience that stretch coming around to the back ribs. A few breaths. And then we're gonna bring the arm back up alongside the ear. And then we're gonna bring the arm behind us. Now again, we have a tendency if we don't have that arm reach, we'll have a tendency to kind of soften the elbow or to arch the upper back. So keep your elbow strong and reach the arm back. Try not to bring the chest forward. I'm just gonna turn sideways so you can see what that looks like. So again, I'm, I'm sitting here, plugged in, 
side bending, and I'm reaching my arm back as far as I can, keeping that elbow strong, and the difference is that, arching my back and closing off those ribs, right? And then bring that arm down, and let's just take the stretch to the other side, give that arm a little break. So same thing, hand to the ground, arm in the air, we're reaching up, and we're, we're side bending, we're bending the spine laterally. <sighs> a few breaths, soft neck, and again, just experience this movement. So breath always goes to what's most available, what's easiest and most spacious, right? So we just opened up the space, so your, your diaphragm's like, oh man, I'm making use of that space. It's awesome. And then we're gonna move the arm forward a bit, and that opens up those back ribs a little bit more. A few nice breaths. You can be using your four square breath here if you want to, or you can just be breathing nice and deeply and just experiencing the movement. We're gonna bring our arm back up alongside our ear again. Try to keep that arm extended strongly. Try not to let it soften and weaken. Keep it reaching and now pull it back. And you'll feel that kind of in this front armpit area and those the, the pectoral muscles into the chest all right and then we'll come back to center so we're going to repeat that series and again you can do it without the help of of the dowel if you don't have one but we're going to do it maybe with the dowel now, if you're in a chair and, and the dowel is shorter than, than this one, um, feel free to, you know, you don't, you don't have to be all the way up high if you have some shoulder limitations as well. Just adjust it so you can do this. Also, a doorway works great. If you move into a doorway, you can put your hand against the doorway. Um, you know, there's a lot of options. This is just kind of an easy one. Most of us have a broom handle sitting around somewhere. So again, I'm gonna take my side bend here, but now I am, my hand is pushing down even as I'm stretching up, right? So soft neck, same thing. I'm trying to get that lateral stretch through here, but instead of just stretching, while I pull down on this dowel, I'm also contracting those muscles. And then I have to work a little harder to drive the breath into that space because it's not so open anymore. There's a little bit of edginess to it. This is where we're going to take our four square breath. At least one cycle, inhale to the count of four as you're pulling down, as you're side stretching. Hold. Slow exhale to the count of four. Hold. All right, maybe take a couple of breaths easy, loosen your arm a bit. We're gonna bring the arm slightly forward. So I'm just kind of changing the angle so the, that dowel is stuck to the ground. I'm still side bending, my neck is still soft. I'm pulling that dowel forward. And again, I can turn sideways so you can see this. Hopefully, let me see if I can not be on the carpet here. So forward, and I'm also, I'm pushing as if I'm trying to pull that hand down the dowel and still side bending, so those side ribs, these back side ribs are nice and open, but engaged. And at least one cycle of four square breath. You can take a second cycle if you'd like. If you need to come up and take a break, feel free to. So this next one is kind of the tricky one. We're bringing our arm around behind us, right? So side bend over, strong straight arm, bring that dowel as far as you can behind. It's going to open up this chest area, but you're also pushing down on that dowel. You'll feel probably a lot of work in your upper back here. That's awesome. That's what we're seeking. At least one cycle of four square breath. And again, you can take another cycle or you can take a rest. Before we do the second side, just come to a quiet seat or just if your legs are still and wide or wherever you are. And I just want you to 
experience what you feel on the side that we've just really worked and the side we haven't yet. We've stretched both sides, but what's the difference here as far as how your breath feels easy, spacious, what moves on your inhale, what moves on your exhale. Right? And then, oh, and I see some comments coming up. I love you guys. I'm glad you're here. Um, again, I'm, I'm just far enough away from the screen that I can't read the comments. Um, let's go ahead and we're going to take our side bend to our second side now. So again, hand on the floor for support, soft head and neck. I'm still plugged in through my hips, reaching down. I've got my arm extended up. And as I take my stretch, now this hand is acting as if it's pulling down, as if I'm trying to like collapse that dowel. Uh, breathing into this side body, kind of right under the armpit. Uh, a friend of mine calls this the space here, especially came from one of my teachers. She calls this space in the armpit the egg hole, like so, like an egg cup, right? And so maybe you can notice that that egg cup kind of engaged, kind of there's this kind of suction up through that space as you're pulling down. And that's where we're trying to get into. We're trying to get into those intercostal areas of our ribs. Hard to, hard to connect to sometimes. All right, after you've taken at least one four square breath here, we're gonna bring that dowel for, or bring the arm forward, right? Adjust your dowel so you have good traction. You are stretching through your side and back area. You are also pushing into the strap, into the dowel, into the doorway, whatever you've got. Soft neck, at least one cycle of four square breath. All right, awesome. Coming back up and again, if you need to take a break at any time, feel free to. Now we're gonna work on that extension of the arm behind you right so again side bending support yourself with your hand on the floor soft head and neck strong connection with the earth through your dowel reach that arm back keep the elbow straight and strong and as you are side bending stretching you're pushing into that dowel you're engaging those muscles across your upper chest into the kind of the front of the armpit and at least one four square cycle of breath. Inhale to the count of four. Pause and hold, stay strong to the count of four. Exhale to the count of four. Hold the exhale to the count of four. And then release. And again, just come into ah, just some quiet space and again just notice notice the evolution of the space that you experience breath within and it may be subtle as we get into the space you know kind of more around the heart it might be emotional sometimes the tension in our body is protective right so very important to move into this space in a way that you're really cultivating awareness and allowing processing to happen, right? Our flesh is intelligent and it holds memory. If how we move through trauma is a physical response, when we hold back that physical response, we hold in some of that protective tension, right? So be, be tender with your heart, right? Okay, so we're gonna come into one more uh, mobility practice. And um, I'm gonna come into, now I'm gonna come into bound angle seat or sometimes called butterfly. For me to come into that seat, um, I like to use, again, some padding under my hips. Um, so I'm gonna shift and get up on my Zafu. <laughs> I have a little bit of a hip injury. It's getting better, but it's still, it's still a, 
pops up on me, especially when I'm changing positions. So I'm moving slowly, but that gives you plenty of time to shift. And if once you're in bound angle, or if you choose a different posture, it's fine. Once you're in it, if you need some um, support under your knees, feel free to grab you know, some blocks or blankets. Um, again, I'm trying to minimize the need for any type of, of um, props because you're at home and you don't have props maybe. Um, I'm going to also, I'm going to give two options. One is to use the dowel and one is to use it without. So what we're going to do is we're going to do some twisting, right? So um, first thing, interlacing those fingers, placing them behind your head. And I've got a big bun back there, so I'm going to kind of reach around my bun. And I'm going to pull those elbows out from my side vision, right? So I've got strong binds through my hands. Again, it's almost like I'm trying to pull them apart and I'm pulling those elbows behind me. Now we've done a lot of work through the shoulders, so this should be not too difficult. If it is difficult for you having your arms above your head, you can place your hands around your ribs. This is where we really want to feel the movement. Um, and then again, the other option is instead of binding around your head, you can put the dowel um, behind your uh, I've got to move forward here, I'm about to hit the table. Um, you can put your dowel behind your behind your uh, shoulders. And again, I'm holding the, the, um, the dowel and I'm pulling out like I'm trying to stretch it apart. And that really activates my shoulders, right? So again, here's one option to use your broomstick or your dowel behind your ribs. And I want to push my ribs into that dowel, keeping me from overly arching my back. Option two is to just sit with your arms around your lower ribs. So this is where we're trying to move and this can help you to kind of tune into that movement. Option three is to have your arms up over your head, pulling those elbows back behind your visual, um, your side vision, right? I'm also pushing my head into my hands and that's keeping my neck straight. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna slowly, we're gonna use our four square count and we're going to rotate. We're going to take a twist here. So it doesn't matter which way you're going first. We're going to go both directions, but I'm going to take an exhale here and then slowly rotate, inhaling to the count of four. Hold to the count of four. Exhale back to the center, count of four. Hold. Second side, inhale, rotate, count to four. Hold for the count of four. Exhale, rotate, center, count of four. We're gonna take one more series, inhaling as you rotate, right? So, Take your, take your own rhythm here. If you want to go faster, if you can't do the four square counting, it's fine. I'm going to do one more round, four square counting. As you finish this round, feel free to take a rest, shift your position. We're going to do that same practice, but we're going to switch the breathing pattern. So we will exhale as we go into a rotation. This is really creating some contraction in that space. And it's really important. Sometimes we think that the most, the, the best way to access space in our body is through stretching. And that's, that's kind of, it's, it's true, you know, like when we're doing that side, there's like, oh man, oh, tons of space, right? But if we really want to shift the uh, tissues in that space, we want to draw a lot of blood in and we draw that in when we contract our muscles, right? So that increases the fluidity, increases the mobility more over time. 
then a stretch. A stretch wakes us up to the space, lets us know it's there, it's awesome, but it's the contractions that really create change in those spaces, right? So again, finding your, if you're bound up here, or if you're holding here, or if you've got the stick, um, find your find your position. I think I'm gonna put my arms here this time just so you see me doing it in this position. And this is where I'm trying to feel both the rotation and the breath. So remember, this time we're going to exhale as we move into our rotation. So start with an inhale, nice and slow, count of four. Hold. Exhale, count of four to your twist. Hold. Inhale back to the center. Hold. Turn and exhale. Hold. Inhale back to the center. One more round. Your pace, your choice of arm, bind. Exhale as you twist. Inhale as you center. And as you finish your last round, however you're doing it, just pause. Notice how you feel. Notice what your breath is like. notice what your heart feels like. I'm gonna just give a couple of uh, choices here for other activities. Uh, many of you have used one of these uh, half round rollers or I call them half domes a lot of times. Again, it's just what my teacher called them. Um, and we have done the exercises where we've laid on our back and we've just kind of taken different arm positions and put different uh, this in different spots along our back to kind of massage and mobilize more directly. Another option is to take a couple of balls, put them in a sack, you know, like a sock or a little bag or whatever you've got, something that um, will hold the balls in place, and you bring them up along either side of your spine. And same thing, you might move your arms around a little bit, take some four square breaths. Um, you can get it up into, oh, it's awesome, get it up into that occiput area along your neck, um, moving your head a little side to side, getting up into those scaling muscles that help with that upward breathing come into this area of the neck where we tend to have a lot of tension, kind of back of the jaw where that TMJ happens, um, and again, kind of back through um, into the upper trapezius area of our, of our upper back, right? So using some massage methods, self-massage methods, you can't get a massage right now, so learn how to massage your own body. If you have um, fibromyalgia and some real sensitivity, especially between those shoulder blades, a lot of us do, um, you can take some socks, ball them up and put them in a sock and use that as kind of your massage medium. It would be much softer connection with your body. So those are all super good options to, to take in and, and massage and open those, those back rib articulations a little bit more. Our, our final breath experience here is going to be a, a pranayama practice I kind, of, I kind of made up. I um, have worked with naturopaths over the years and the thymus gland in your heart area right here is responsible for helping your immune response. Um, and it's most active when we're children, um, but it will become active whenever we need to build up antibodies. And of course, all of us are building up antibodies now to something that's completely new, right? So um, we want to stimulate our thymus and let it know we need it to be there. We also want to um, bring some blood into it so it is healthy and vibrant as well. Um, so this is one of my favorite breathing practices. It's a little bit silly and I, I kind of, I, I've named it and it's maybe not, um, 
maybe not awesome that I use some Sanskrit mixed in with some other uh, terms. Um, and so if I offend anyone who, who is a, a Sanskrit scholar or a South Asian person who grew up with uh, the respect of Sanskrit, I, I totally apologize, but it's just a good way to kind of remember the name. Um, and so in Sanskrit that your names are, the names of your hand are hasta, hasta, right? And what we're gonna do is we're gonna use our hands, our hastas, and you're gonna make just a kind of a really soft, flat surface with your fingers, right? And we're going to, we're going to pound our chest. Now, in our culture, um, when we see someone pounding their chest like this, usually it's Tarzan, and he's making a Tarzan call, right? And we will be making a Tarzan call. The voice is a very important vibration through our, through our chest, right? And it stimulates the vagus nerve. It does all kinds of good things. So we are going to be making, you can also just like, uh, any stress or tension, just Tarzan it out of you, right? So the other thing is we're gonna go until we have no breath. So this will be a very long exhale. And as our breath goes away, we will be curling into this kind of cat-like posture. We're gonna really squeeze that diaphragm up as far as it can go. The stomach will contract. The ribs will, even though we're curling in, the ribs are gonna close in. The shoulders will hunch up, right? We will. We will close as much as we can and the breath will will be completely gone when there's no more sound when the breath is completely gone you will hold your breath for as long as you are able and that's really important and usually when I do this in a class like I'll kind of spring forward and everybody else springs forward it's like use your own pace here i'm going to do it with you and then i encourage you to do it on your own um, and just not have me guide you but um, the final part of this is after you've squeezed all the breath out after there's no more tarzan call it's completely gone then the last part of this is kind of this springing forward of the chest we're trying to get some sponginess and some mobility into the cartilage around your sternum into this into the space along the front of the ribs and so the last part of this is is jazz hands and a springing forward right and you just let the breath come in fully so it's called tarza hasta jazzasana okay um so that's <laughs> that's my sanskrit <laughs> melding in with with uh tarzan call and jazz hands okay so tarza hasta jazzasana all right, so again, soft, soft, um, soft hands, soft fists. Take a nice big breath in. Again, remember you're sitting comfortably. Nice big breath in. As you start to breathe out, a little tamponade on your chest here, and oh. you all did your Tarzan call. Maybe we should have done that on Zoom and I could have turned the audio on for everybody. <laughs> all right, so practice this daily, daily. Stimulate that thymus gland. Let your stress out through your voice. Let the muscles around your chest contract completely hold that energy in again that contraction what's it doing it's bringing blood circulation into the space around your heart into the thymus muscle it's like you're squishing all of it in right and then when we take our breath 
we're stretching, we're kind of getting the sponginess, the springiness into that cartilage around our sternum, into the, the front space of the ribs. So this is an important practice to, to open up the front of the chest, to release some of the congestion and tightness there, and also to stimulate the, the thymus. Along the back of the body, self-massage tools, right? Um, try to use your four square breath. You can, again, you can do this against the, the doorways, putting both hands up, taking both arms through your stretching and your breathing. Just keep this part of your body as, as mobile and as open as possible. And, and clean it out, right? That exhale, what does it do? It is cleaning. This is why we're all wearing face masks, right? Because every time you exhale, whether you're coughing or sneezing, when you exhale, you are purifying. You are letting things go, right? So the Tarzan yell is really good too to purify your voice. I think right now, you know, the stress and the tension in our society is showing and, and people are, are letting that stress come out through their voice and not always in the most kind and compassionate ways. Um, and so, huh, let it, let it go. Tarzan yourself out of that space of having to, to voice something that needs to be let out, right? Express yourself, absolutely. If you have an opinion, you have the right to an opinion. But also, I think that when we let that purification process happen through our voice, just Tarzaning it out, um, we start to um, maybe be able to, again, you'll feel how <gasps> that breath comes in. It's fresh. It's new. Our hands are open. This is a gesture of, of like, yeah, I'm open, right? So um, opening your heart, maybe we can start to come to middle ground between, um, between some of the, the stress and, and uh, reactivity that's happening around us. Um, so that is our practice today. We're coming up onto an hour. I will talk you into Shavasana. Um, I will also allow you to just stay in it, but I will stop the recording here uh, in a few moments, all right? So hopefully your shoulders, your ribs, your chest all feel nice and loose and easy. I'm gonna invite you to, to lay back, to find a comfortable seated position. I'm sorry, it's comfortable uh, reclining position. But if it's, if it's not comfortable for you to get to the ground and you've been sitting on a chair during this practice, feel free to sit back into your chair. Um, relax, relax your body. Come to that place of quiet stillness. In the stillness of your, of your physical body, there is still this gentle wave, this gentle ripple of, of breath, always moving, always present. Present when you're moving around and not aware of it. Present here in this quiet, reposed position. Present when you're sleeping. Present when you're in the deepest sleep of all. Not dreaming, not in any way conscious, Yet there's something tied to life within you without you even needing to know about it. Without you even needing it, really, because you're not moving. This gentle force is prana, the energy of universe, of cosmos. Prana links us all. Energy flows. The energy of the sun flows to the earth through 
millions and millions and millions of, of miles through light years. Prana flows through our skin into the space around us. Prana flows where we place our attention if we are in a waking state. Just like when we stretched our arms and we could feel the breath moving there. Prana is a gift. We receive it even when we're not conscious of it. Prana is a link that connects us all, even if we're thousands of miles away. We've discovered through this pandemic how much our energies, our breaths, our prana is linked globally. It's linked historically. And it will be linked in the future. So how is it we would like to share this gift? To share it into the cells of our bodies for vitality? And to share it into our communities to create better social structures? Better health of our whole communities? and better, not just in our world, but in the global community. Prana is power. As you are quieting and tapping into this gentle wave, know that it is strong. It is powerful and it is yours to share. We're all breathing in as well as breathing out. We're all consuming. But we can consume in a way that creates prosperity. We can learn from the forest taking in, but creating abundance. Let your breath become your resource. Let it become your strength. Find the path to inner peace and prosperity for all. As we say goodbye, we say hello. Namaste.